I kind of got myself a little lost. I don't really know how I got here, and I don't know where here is. There's lots of trees all around me, and the view is kind of obscured. I um, think I came from that way. Now, I'm no survivalist, uh, so I, well, I'm a little stuck. Yeah, you know, the trees are even obscuring the sun, so you know, even if I could tell which direction the sun is, I'm not sure I could tell from that which way to go. Uh, I've lost the path. Well, I bet this happens more than a little bit when you're reading. All of a sudden you find your place in a, a page or a paragraph and you don't know how you got there. Right now I'm sitting amongst a bunch of trees and I, I can't see the whole picture. Same thing happens when you're reading. You read a bunch of sentences and you can't see the whole picture. You can't see the forest for the trees. How the heck am I going to get out of here? Now without a path like this one, you can get lost. Or at least I can. And uh, the same thing can happen with a book. If you don't have a path, you don't know where you're going with what you're reading. Now, the purpose of a book is that path. The purpose will help guide your reading to ask the questions, uh, to ask the right questions while you're skimming and trying to figure out what you're supposed to do. Now, the purpose of a book basically is what is the impact that the author is trying to have on you? Why is the author writing. Every book has a purpose. You know, a cookbook is trying to teach you a set of skills to uh, create uh, dishes to eat, right? Uh, a novel or pretty much any fiction is probably trying to evoke a certain set of emotions, uh, hopefully culminating in entertainment. And which emotions are going to be involved depends upon the book, depends upon the novel. History, at the very least, is trying to provide you with a series of events. And history is trying to do more than that. It's also trying to provide you with an explanation for why those events happened. So when you're reading history, you try to figure out what are the events, what is the explanation that the author uh, is trying to provide. That's the why. Now, every book has a purpose. In fact, uh, every human endeavor has a purpose. Every human act has a purpose and most of the time that purpose involves you if you don't know what that purpose is well quite frankly um, they may just have the impact uh, on you that they hope whether you want that impact or not so while you're reading be aware of what the impact is that this uh, author is trying to have on you and through skimming we can find that purpose really, really quickly. So the purpose of a book, roughly, is what is the author trying to do? What kind of impact is the author trying to have on you? Now, <clears throat> you know, there are different purposes for different kinds of books. You know, something in fiction uh, is trying to, you know, is trying to entertain, ultimately. Um, with uh, um, Math, you know, the purpose is trying to describe and explain and even prove something about the relationship between quantities. The physical sciences are interested in questions like, you know, what are the causal relationships between material objects? These are, um, these are going to be the purposes of those books. There's usually going to be some pretty specific application of those. In philosophy, we try to ask questions about uh, certain kinds of concepts, uh, specifically, you know, very, very abstract ones. You can divide these into four main groupings. You have um, metaphysics, which roughly asks questions about what is real, uh, what exists, what doesn't exist. Uh, you have epistemology, and epistemology is roughly uh, questions about knowledge. What is knowledge, and how do we know? Do we know? Then you have ethics, and ethics asks the question of how you are to live your life. And uh, finally, we have logic, and logic asks the question of how do I reach conclusions? And usually, you know, more importantly, how do I reach conclusions that are true? Now, it's, it's pretty much impossible to have any kind of philosophical investigation that doesn't involve 
uh, all four of these, at least to some degree. So for instance, you know, if you're asking a question in ethics, you're trying to ask the question, how am I to live my life? And suppose, uh, you know, it has to deal with, um, you know, engaging with other people, uh, you got to know, well, what is a person? If you have, if you're trying to figure out what rights do I have as a person, you have to ask the what is the what is a person? Well, that's a question of metaphysics. Uh, very quickly, that um, uh, very quickly, that moves to questions about knowing what a person is and how do I know what a person is? How do I, uh, you know, what's my evidence and how do I reach that conclusion? And then all of that uh, is going to involve logic. All of that's going to deal with how do I reach conclusions that are true? Because you know, especially with ethics, the stakes are high. Um, if you uh, don't understand what a person is, but you think only think you do, if you have a false belief of what a per person is, you can very quickly uh, do serious harm to things that are not persons, but you think they're things that excuse me things that are persons, but you think they aren't persons. So uh, philosophy is going to deal with these kinds of questions, those kinds of purposes, and uh, like I said, it's pretty much impossible to deal with any one field without at least involving the other three. Remember when I said every human endeavor has a purpose? Well, the zoo is a human endeavor. It has a purpose. The, uh, so the question is, what are the organizers, uh, the makers of the zoo trying to do? So I want you to think about this for a second. Uh, pause the video and go ahead and write it down. Well, what do you think? Well, if they came up with something like, uh, the purpose of a zoo is to educate people about uh, animals, their variety, their differences, uh, their natures, their climate, uh, and also how to preserve animals, then you probably have something like um, the purpose of the zoo. Now, for this purpose, there are many subjects in the zoo. Um, there are lions, tigers, bears, uh, monkeys, gorillas, um, there are fish, reptiles, there are birds. Uh, there are uh, a, well, a huge variety of animals here, and these are the subjects of the zoo. And these subjects, they help the zoo achieve its purpose, right? They are uh, helping to fulfill the goal of the zoo. You, know, you can't have a zoo without showing different animals. So, uh, in fact, the park is divided into these subjects. Well, the zoo has many subjects, like that one, <laughs> uh, and these subjects help achieve the purpose. Well, books have subjects too, or topics, or concepts, or definitions that help achieve the purpose. So in our philosophy class, we're going to call these terms. Right? Terms are the important concepts and definitions used to achieve the purpose, and usually that purpose is going to be some kind of question. Now. You might be wondering, uh, how are you supposed to find the terms? Well, I can't think of a single purpose that doesn't include at least one term. In fact, the purposes are going to contain the most important terms. Well, here at the zoo, there are lots of signs that tell you the subjects of the zoo. Remember, every human endeavor has a purpose. The terms are what uh, help the uh, people achieve their purpose. So here, we have the subjects of the zoo. One of these subjects is bears. So we have a sign telling us there are bears here. Books work a lot of the same way. Section titles, chapter titles, all of these contain the subjects of the book. Right? So for instance, if you are reading a chapter on some of the ancient Greek philosophers and you see a subheading or subtitle with Thales, uh, then you know that Thales is one of the ancient Greek philosophers and you want to write that down as a term. Even though he's a person, he's still a subject, 
So you'll want to write that down as, uh, as a term. If you're reading a, a, sec a book and the section title is all universals, all numbers are universals, you're going to want to write down numbers and universals to figure out what, do, what does the author mean by, by those. So a really great place, or at least it used to be a really great place to find uh, a real complete listing of all the section titles and all the headings was the table of contents. So a good, really good practice is before you read a chapter or a whole book, is sit down and write down the terms that you find in the section titles. So the most important terms are going to be in the purpose of the book, or they should be in the purpose of the book. You can also find terms in section titles and the title of the book itself. And then sometimes the terms are just going to be within the text. Within the text. Uh, trying to find these terms within the text is a bit of an art. It's going to take a lot of practice. It's going to take experience. Uh, to do this, you have to read with the purpose in mind. This is what's called active reading. You can't rely on the text just to simply imprint knowledge on your brain. You have to learn how to find it. So if you keep in mind the purpose of the book, and with this purpose in mind, you're trying to find those concepts and definitions that help the author achieve the purpose of the book, then you've gone a long way to finding the terms. And later videos, we're going to see uh, how further skills in reading uh, build on purpose and terms.